Hi, I'm Arnaud. Having spent quite a few lessons on space and shape, geometry, it's now time to change our attention and start working on a new learning outcome, namely measurement. Measuring is quite a natural thing to do, from measuring the time it takes to complete a task, to determining the amount of paint needed to paint a wall, to determining how much flour is needed to bake a loaf of bread. We are measuring all of the time. Before we get started with this lesson, let's cross to Asunda and find out what the students with her would like to know about measurement and measuring. Hey guys, today we're at Aurora Private School. I'm so excited to be here. There's a lot of work to be done, so we have to get going. But before we do that, my friends have only got one thing to say. Welcome Today's maths lesson, we're looking at the area of rectangles and triangles. And to help me out is Maxine. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks, and you? I'm very good, thank you. So, fill me in. What do you do when you and your friends are hanging out? Well, we usually go and sit on the field and just kind of enjoy ourselves, sit in the sun and chat to friends. Gossip with other friends yeah. too. <laughs> okay, 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 I'm with you. And what's your favorite subject? Like, what do you, what um, do you want? And after that, what do you want to be when you're done at school? Uh, I like arts and I'm actually not sure what I want to be. Okay. I'm still okay. thinking about still it. Still figuring it yeah. out. Yeah. No, it's cool, it's cool. But for now, we're dealing with maths, right? Yeah. Go mm -hmm. ahead and ask your question. Um, one of the things I think of when you mention measuring is area. What are we actually measuring when we determine the area of something? Well, I know. I look forward to answering that question in today's lesson. However, before doing so, I'd like to link the work that we're doing to our curriculum. Measuring involves using measuring instruments to determine measurements in units appropriate to a situation so that we can solve problems. We're going to start our study of measurement by revisiting area. For almost as long as you've been studying mathematics, you've come across area. We say that area refers to the number of square units of a certain size needed to cover the surface of a figure. To make sense of that remark, you probably remember determining the area of different shapes using a square grid in primary school. What you probably did was to take a grid and place it over the shape whose area you wanted to determine. Say you wanted to determine the area of this leaf. You might start out by selecting a square grid and placing it over the leaf and counting the number of squares needed to cover the leaf. One, two, three, four, and so on. Of course, this will have raised questions about what to do with the squares that only partly cover the leaf. Now, you will have made a decision about that. You might also have chosen to use a grid with smaller squares. Now with smaller squares, there would have been fewer squares about which there was ambiguity in terms of whether or not to include the square in your counting. Using the large squares, you might have decided that there were say 12 squares needed to cover the leaf. And using the smaller squares, you might have concluded that there were say 46 or 50 squares needed to cover the leaf. However, the size of the leaf has not changed. So what we need is a way of converting between large squares and small squares. Now, in terms of our grid, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 small squares in every large square. So in our case, we have an automatic conversion rate. Of course, we cannot always determine the area of a shape using a grid. It's simply not practical. For this reason, 
mathematicians have tried to develop formula for a range of different shapes. Let's begin having a look at the simplest of all of those shapes in this regard, the rectangle. What I'm going to try to do is to conduct a little investigation with you that will demonstrate just how obvious the formula for the area of a rectangle actually is. Here I have a number of squares, 24 to be precise. And what I'd like to do is I'd like us to arrange these squares in different rectangular arrangements. The question we start out with is, how many such rectangles can we make? Well, there's our first one, four squares by six squares. Let's see if I were to do this. If I move those squares there, and those three squares to there, and another three squares to there, and those three squares to there, then, when we're nearly there, then I have another rectangular arrangement of those same squares. This time I've got a rectangle that's eight squares long and three squares wide. Thank you. 